Hi, uh, my name is Sydney. Um, so there are two types of associative learning, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Classical conditioning involves a subject having an involuntary bodily response to something that doesn't intrinsically have that response. It involves four different parts. Um, the unconditioned stimulus, which is something that triggers humans biologically, such as the smell of food cooking. Um, then our reaction to that stimulus is our unconditioned response. We automatically just start salivating, so that's why it's unconditioned. It's just biology. So really, this is a kind of a simple cause and effect type of learning where you just switch the cause for something else. A neutral stimulus is added to the unconditioned stimulus so that the brain starts to associate that neutral stimulus with the unconditioned response. This switch of association is called acquisition and is what a conditioned response is. For example, say you're having trouble with your boss not liking you. You find out that her favorite candy is a Snickers bar. And so when she sees a Snickers bar, which would be the unconditioned stimulus, she starts to salivate and feels happiness, which is the unconditioned response. So every time she sees you, you could give her a Snickers bar. You'd have to be consistent over time, but at the end of it, just at the sight of you, which would be the neutral stimulus, she would begin to salivate and be happy, <laughs> which would be the conditioned response. So you could essentially Pavlov or condition your boss to like you. Operant conditioning is another type of associative learning and functions a little differently. It is essentially learning of cause and effect, or in other words, associating a behavior with its consequence. This concept relies on the notion that if the consequence is positive, then the person is more likely to repeat it in the future. And if the consequence is negative, the person is less likely to do it again in the future. Operant conditioning is all about reacting to behavior, either through enforcement or punishment. Let's start with reinforcement. So you can either have positive reinforcement where something is added to enforce that behavior or negative reinforcement where something is taken away to enforce that behavior. Examples of reinforcement would be to give your child an ice cream cone for their good grades, which would be positive reinforcement, or a parent giving into their screaming toddler to make the crying stop, which would be negative reinforcement. There is another way of enforcing behavior, which is punishment. In positive punishment, something is added to decrease the likelihood of the behavior, like asking your kid to do extra chores because they hit their sister. Or there is negative reinforcement where something is taken away to decrease the likelihood of behaviors, which would be taking away their Xbox if they had bad grades. Positive reinforcement has proved time and time again to be the most helpful of all of these. Both of these are examples of conditioning and both are in the behaviorism belief system, but that's kind of where the similarities end. Um, in classical conditioning, uh, you're pairing two unrelated stimuli together. And in operant conditioning, it is pairing a behavior with its consequences. So it's more cause and effect. Classical conditioning also focuses on involuntary behaviors like salivating, while operant focuses on voluntary behaviors like choosing to do the dishes. Classical conditioning does not require the participant to know what they are being conditioned to do, while operant conditioning requires that a person reflects and makes a conscious choice about their behavior. In operant conditioning, the participant is affected by incentives or punishments, while classical conditioning is more of a neutral phenomenon. Even though they are two very different types of learning, they both are extremely effective by themselves or even together.